It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and up here in the Arctic Circle it's already pitch black. The bad news is that the weather's still pretty bad, the forecast is worse, so we're going to need an awful lot of luck if we're going to see the Northern Lights tonight. I'd just about given up on seeing anything, and then the clouds parted. Suddenly, the aurora came out to play. It started gently, barely visible to the eye, but in these speeded up pictures, you can definitely see the movement of the northern lights. In the distance, the pink glow of Tromso only adds to the picture. Pete and Mike Koch joined me outside to watch and photograph the display. To avoid disturbing our view of the sky, we've switched to an infrared camera. Local aurora chaser and expert imager Chettle Scogley also kept us company. Well, this is pretty spectacular. This is the brightest I've seen aurora for a long while. How quickly can things alter? It alters well quickly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be so, so, uh, go so fast that uh, yeah, you can't imagine it. You have to, you have to see it. <laughs> as, as we're doing now, look <laughs> at these. brightening over there, isn't that fantastic? Slow down, and the, these That's vertical amazing. lines. Mike, w what's causing this structure? It's not just a simple curtain anymore. No, the, the, the vertical lines, they basically are always parallel to the Earth's magnetic field. So the particles that come down, that collide with the atmosphere, that cause the aurora, are guided by the magnetic field. So you're seeing the magnetic field structure, and then the vertical extent is due to the fact that the aurora doesn't occur just at one altitude. Mm -hmm. It typically occurs from about 100 kilometers at the bottom to two or 300 kilometers at the top. Okay. And um, that's due to the fact that the energy of the electrons that are coming down is not a single energy. Uh -huh. There's a spread of energies. Higher the energy, the lower the altitude, typically. Okay. So how long have you been chasing the, the Northern Lights? Since... Uh, 29th of October 2003. Now I know that day. <laughs> that, that was a very that was yeah, a good, we, we saw that in England, did. in yeah. fact. Yeah. So it must have been good. How, yeah. how did it look from here? Oh, it was it was amazing. You could actually see the snow was colored red. Wow. Yeah. It was okay. the first night out there mm. and the best night. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to close that door and start all over again. <laughs> and then, then, then you started taking images. Yeah. The, I mean, I've seen some of your work. How on earth do you produce those? Because we were arguing about it. Uh, and we yeah. decided we should just ask you. It's hundreds of stills. Oh. Uh, I put them together with the transitions between. Wow, videos. look at that. Oh, it's quite it's spectacular. It is. <laughs> So Mike, what would the radars be doing right now? The radar is fundamentally measuring the actual electron density, the plasma density as we call it, and the temperature. There's more energy being dissipated in the atmosphere from the auroras than there are all the power stations on the planet put together. <laughs> so the, the, the energy that's being dissipated is fantastic. The problem is, of course, it's uh, mostly at least 100 kilometers above our heads. So if we could gain access to it, it would uh, probably solve our energy requirements forever. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's a bit difficult to get your uh, plug up there 100 kilometers above our head. So, um, the whole sky seems to be glowing now. Is that my eyes? Or is that no, I think it is, true? definitely. There's, um, it's actually moving down to the south, isn't it? Some of it is just above Orion. And we've got a, a good brightening over there in um, oh, yes. Leo now as well. Yes. Oh, look at, look at this. Amazing. Look at that. It's Absolutely very faint, incredible. but there are... The, these dark lanes, almost as if they've been drawn through the sky. Line, yeah. It's stunning. These aren't the black aurorae. And we they were could well about. be. And you have these lanes between the aurora, which are almost completely devoid of the aurora. They're not quite empty. And that's the region where the currents that are associated with the aurora flow back out into space. It's quite an eerie effect. It it's, is. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. We've got a brightening edge now appearing up there. Look. That's one of the mysteries of, of the aurora, is why it's possible to have structures that are so thin. That's very hard to explain. It's much easier to explain the thousand kilometers of east-west extent, but when you have these very thin structures, generally in the north-south direction, they are very hard to explain. So we, that was, I guess we've had the scientists view from Mike. There must be all sorts of legends. I can't imagine living out here and, and seeing this and not inventing stories. What, what are the local stories about the Northern Lights? The Vikings, I think they call it the, the bridge to heaven or something like that. Okay. And, uh, 
Isn't there a rather lovely Danish legend about swans that get trapped in the ice and it's them flapping their wings <laughs> and reflecting yes. the light yes. which is causing yes. the northern lights? Yes, yes. It's also a myth about um, unmarried women who died and okay. they're still floating up there, <laughs> okay, well. releasing energy. <laughs> <laughs> More energy yeah. than all the power stations, <laughs> apparently. Oh, yes. um, <laughs> that that sounds lovely. Lovely. <laughs> it's, it's, in fact, it's absolutely brilliant. Well, the show seems to be over. We had streamers, we had bright bands, we even had the aurora overhead, which I've never seen before. It's been literally unforgettable. <laughs>